những thay đổi tôi là Josh và tôi chỉ là một học sinh trung học bình thường. Bố và mẹ tôi đã ly hôn khi tôi mới 4 tuổi nên tôi không thực sự nhớ anh ấy như thế nào. Cuộc sống của chúng tôi sau đó rất khó khăn nhưng có thể chịu đựng được cho đến khi tôi 16 tuổi thì mẹ tôi suy sụp và phải nhập viện. Điều đó không biến mất khi nghỉ ngơi và không thể giải thích bằng tình trạng bệnh lý tiềm ẩn. Nuôi nắng tôi như con đẻ của ông ấy. Sau 2 năm mẹ tôi có thể ra viện bằng cách nào đó và bà cũng ở lại nhà chú ráp vì chúng tôi thực sự không có nhà ở riêng. Giặt ủi và những thứ khác trong khi nghe chú tôi nói, bạn không cần phải làm việc này, bạn chỉ có thể nghỉ ngơi, và tôi mẹ trả lời, không sao đâu, con không mong manh như mẹ nghĩ đâu, trông con khỏe mạnh thế nào. Mẹ tội nghiệp của con, con muốn cho mẹ một cuộc sống tốt đẹp hơn với một người đáng yêu như mẹ đáng có, là những gì tôi nghĩ. Tôi học cả ngày lẫn đêm như điên, tôi tuyệt vọng, thật thất vọng cho đến khi một hy vọng cuối cùng đã đến. Tôi tôi, mẹ tôi đã nhận được một suất học vào Đại học Silliman. Tôi rất vui và mẹ tôi cũng vậy. Hạnh phúc, tôi muốn làm việc chăm chỉ để làm cho mẹ tôi hạnh phúc trong suốt quãng đời còn lại của bà cho đến khi một điều bất ngờ xảy ra khiến thế giới đảo lộn. Ánh sáng, thật đáng sợ. Sau khi trường bị đình chỉ thậm chí việc ra ngoài cũng trở nên khó khăn vì những quy định cụ thể. Chính phủ đã cố gắng giúp đỡ nhưng không phải ai cũng nhận được vì các quan chức tham nhũng nhận thấy đây là cơ hội và không cho tình hình trôi đi tôi bất giác khóc khi xem bản tin có bao nhiêu người chết mỗi ngày, khi nghĩ rằng đại dịch này cũng do con người gây ra. Con người, người chết cũng là con người, nỗi đau đó cứ mỗi đêm lại xuyên vào tim tôi khi tôi tiếp tục xem tin tức. Nước mắt chảy dài trên người người thân đã khuất, tôi muốn lau đi, bị ảnh hưởng bởi vì rút tất cả chúng tôi đều cảm thấy buồn và lo lắng, chú tôi đã bị cách ly trong 14 ngày. Tôi nhận ra rằng tìm việc khó hơn gấp 5 lần trong hoàn cảnh này. Tôi đã khóc và hét lên rằng mọi thứ dường như không thành công thì trời bắt đầu đổ mưa như thể ông trời biết nỗi đau của tôi và như thể nó đang cố gắng an ủi tôi. Hy vọng nhưng bây giờ, đó là tuyệt vọng. Nhìn lên bầu trời, sau nhiều tháng chờ đợi, chính phủ cuối cùng đã quyết định giới thiệu học trực tuyến vì họ nói rằng không có lý do gì để ngăn cản mọi người đến với giáo dục tôi thực sự rất vui nhưng sau đó một lần nữa chi phí lại tăng lên, đồ dùng học tập mọi thứ trở nên nhiều hơn đồ ăn, quần áo và đồ dùng học tập đắt đỏ cũng không ngoại lệ nên tôi đã nghĩ cách kiếm thêm tiền. Dự án của tôi đến văn phòng giáo viên với kính che mặt và khẩu trang như mọi khi tôi từ từ bắt đầu bước trên đường về nhà cách trường đại học của tôi 3 km. Có lúc vui và cũng có lúc buồn, điều đó khiến tôi tự hỏi không biết lúc đó biểu cảm của mình như thế nào đối với người khác và biểu cảm của tôi như thế nào. Sau một tháng, mọi thứ trở nên dễ dàng hơn đối với tôi. Một thử thách có thể tiếp thêm sức mạnh để chúng ta trưởng thành và mạnh mẽ hơn. Tôi yêu gia đình của mình như những người khác yêu chính nơi đó. Cuộc sống của tôi có thể khó khăn nhưng tôi không nghĩ đó là điều đáng tiếc bởi vì có những đứa trẻ đang ở một tình huống thảm khốc hơn tôi rất nhiều. Mẹ tôi đã nhìn chằm chằm vào tôi nhiều hơn khi bà ấy làm những ngày này và bất cứ khi nào tôi hỏi tại sao bà ấy sẽ trả lời trẻ em không ở lại trẻ em. Bà ấy nói rằng bà ấy nhớ tôi đã đáng yêu như thế nào khi tôi còn trẻ. Tôi rất vui vì cô ấy trông như đang tận hưởng cuộc sống của mình. Một ngày khi tôi xem tin tức tôi đã thấy cơn bão giết chết nhiều người như thế nào, nó không xảy ra chỉ một lần, một cơn bão gây ra lũ lụt sạt lở đất và làm cho người dân mất nhà. Rồi sau đó là động đất thật quá đáng. Những thảm kịch này khiến tôi gầy đi ca rằng ở đó từ từ kết thúc nhân văn. Tôi chỉ sợ Changes. I'm Josh and I'm just a normal high school student. Then my mom and dad had a divorce when I was still 4 years old. So I don't really remember what he was like after they divorced my mom worked at a mansion owned by a businessman. Our life then were hard but was bearable it was until I turned 16 when my mom collapsed and was hospitalized. Then my mom then was said to have a chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS. It is a disorder characterized by extreme fatigue and tiredness that doesn't go away with rest and can't be explained by underlying medical condition. My aunts and my mom's other relatives helped paid my mom's medical expenses and hospitalization and my uncle Ralph took me in, feed me, and educated me, he raised me like I was one of his own. After two years my mom was able to go out of the hospital somehow and she also stayed in my uncle Ralph as we don't really have a house. On our own point one day I saw my mom doing laundry and other stuff while hearing my uncle saying, you don't need to do this you can just rest, and my mom replied, no it's okay, I'm not as fragile as you think. Look how healthy I am. My poor mom, I want to give her a better life a life a person as loving as her deserves to have, is what I thought. I studied day and night like crazy, I was desperate, it was frustrating until a hope finally came. I. 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 
Mom I got a scholarship to Silliman University, I was happy and my mom was also happy. I wanna work hard to make my mom happy for the rest of her life, until an unexpected things made the world upside down. Many people were miserable and many people were afraid. A virus that's said to spread faster than alighting, how frightening. After that school was suspended even going out became difficult because of specific regulations. Every day was like no other day, every day was of no peace to those who are not guileless. Many business were close and many people lost their jobs. The government tried to help but not everyone received it as corrupt officials found it was an opportunity and didn't let the situation slip away I would unconsciously cry upon. Watching the news report of how many deaths there are each days. When I think that this pandemic was also caused by humans, humans. The one who died were also humans the pain pierces my heart every single night as I continue to watch the news. The tears flowing down the deceased loved ones, I want to wipe them away. Point one day a call came from my uncle's company and was said that my uncle was affected by the virus that we were all felt sad and worried them why uncle was quarantined for 14 days, I tried to find jobs hoping to help provide for the family, even just a little bit and I found out it was hopeless. I realized it was five times harder to find a job under this situation I cried and screamed. How everything seems to not work then it begun to rain as if the heavens knew of my pain, and as if it's trying to console me I thought it was hope but now, it's despair. Looking up the sky, after months of waiting the government finally decided to introduce online learning as they said that, there is no such reason to stop people from getting educated, I was really happy but then again the expenses grew. School supplies, everything became more expensive from food, clothes, and school supplies was no exception so I thought of how to earn extra money I decided to sell my paintings online and set an affordable price and I was able to overcome my problem because of it point one day after passing my projects to the teacher's office with my face shield and mask on as always I slowly started walking on my way home which is three kilometers away from my university as I walk past each building I only saw two kind of expression based on their voice and eyes there were happy and there were sad it made me wonder what my expression looks to others that moment. And which of the two expression I had I believe that this might be long road but I will slowly get there, slowly. After a month everything became more easy for me and my mom is doing great and I started tutoring our neighbor's kids. Which earned me extra money, I never knew that I could smile under these difficulties. As my mom always said these might be a challenge that can strengthen us to make us grow and be be stronger. I love my family as much as others love their own and my life might be hard but I don't think that's something to pity because there are kids who are in a much more dire situation than I am. My mom has been staring at me more that she does these paw days and whenever I asked why she would answer kids doesn't stay kids. She said that she missed how cute I was when I was young. I'm happy that she looks like she is enjoying her life. Point one day as I watched the news I saw how the typhoon killed many people in an instance. It didn't happen only once. A typhoon causes floods, landslides, and made people lose their home, then followed by earthquakes, this is too much. These tragedy made me think that they're slowly ending humanities, I was afraid just the though. Changes. I'm Josh and I'm just a normal high school student then my mom and dad had a divorce when I was still 4 years old. So I don't really remember what he was like after they divorced my mom worked at a mansion owned by a businessman. Our life then were hard but was bearable it was until I turned 16 when my mom collapsed and was hospitalized my mom then was said to have a chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS. It is a disorder characterized by extreme fatigue and tiredness that doesn't go away with rest and can't be explained by underlying medical condition. My aunts and my mom's other relatives helped paid my mom's medical expenses. And hospitalization m my uncle ralph took me in feed me and educated me he raised me like i was one of his own after two years my mom was able to go out of the hospital somehow and she also stayed in my uncle ralph as we don't really have a house on our own point one day i saw my mom doing laundry and other stuff while hearing my uncle saying you don't need to do this you can just rest and my mom replied no it's okay i'm not as fragile as you think look how healthy i am my poor mom, I want to give her a better life a life a person as loving as her deserves to have, is what I thought. I studied day and night like crazy, I was desperate, it was frustrating until a hope finally came. I. 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 Mom I got a scholarship to Silliman University, I was happy and my mom was also happy. 
I want to work hard to make my mom happy for the rest of her life, until an unexpected things made the world upside down. Many people were miserable and many people were afraid. A virus that's said to spread faster than alighting, how frightening. After that school was suspended even going out became difficult because of specific regulations. Every day was like no other day, every day was of no peace to those who are not guileless. Many business were close and many people lost their jobs. The government tried to help but not everyone received it as corrupt officials found it was an opportunity and didn't let the situation slip away I would unconsciously cry upon. Watching the news report of how many deaths there are each days. When I think that this pandemic was also caused by humans, humans, the one who died were also humans the pain pierces my heart every single night as I continue to watch the news. The tears flowing down the deceased loved ones, I want to wipe them away. Point one day a call came from my uncle's company and was said that my uncle was affected by the virus that we were all felt sad and worried them my uncle was quarantined for 14 days, I tried to find jobs hoping to help provide for the family, even just a little bit and I found out it was hopeless. I realized it was five times harder to find a job under this situation I cried and screamed. How everything seems to not work then it begun to rain as if the heavens knew of my pain, and as if it's trying to console me I thought it was hope but now, it's despair. Looking up the sky, after months of waiting the government finally decided to introduce online learning as they said that, there is no such reason to stop people from getting educated, I was really happy but then again the expenses grew. School supplies, everything became more expensive from food, clothes, and school supplies was no exception so I thought of how to earn extra money I decided to sell my paintings online and set an affordable price and I was able to overcome my problem because of it point one day after passing my projects to the teacher's office with my face shield and mask on as always I slowly started walking on my way home which is three kilometers away from my university as I walk past each building I only saw two kind of expression based on their voice and eyes there were happy and there were sad it made me wonder what my expression looks to others that moment, and which of the two expression I had I believe that this might be long road but I will slowly get there, slowly. After a month everything became more easy for me and my mom is doing great and I started tutoring our neighbor's kids, which earned me extra money, I never knew that I could smile under these difficulties, as my mom always said these might be a challenge that can strengthen us to make us grow and be be stronger. I love my family as much as others love their own and my life might be hard but I don't think that's something to pity because there are kids who are in a much more dire situation than I am. My mom has been staring at me more that she does these paw days and whenever I asked why she would answer kids doesn't stay kids, she said that she missed how cute I was when I was young. I'm happy that she looks like she is enjoying her life. Point one day as I watched the news I saw how the typhoon killed many people in an instance. It didn't happen only once. A typhoon causes floods, landslides, and made people lose their home, then followed by earthquakes, this is too much. These tragedy made me think that they're slowly ending humanities, I was afraid just the